Hello everyone, I'm Dr. David Perlmutter. Today I'd like to talk about magnesium and kind of in a role that you might not be so familiar with. I mean, we all recognize the importance of magnesium these days. This is a micronutrient, a mineral, that plays a role in allowing more than 300 enzymes in the body to work effectively. It is really fundamentally important for how our bodies make protein, how we make DNA, how we make RNA, and even how we're able to utilize fuels uh, to make energy within the body. But one area that I think is getting a lot of interest as of late is the role of magnesium in terms of insulin sensitivity. That means magnesium is important for how insulin, the hormone, works in the human body. Insulin, of course, being important uh, for regulating the blood sugar. So I'd like to take a look at that because we've known that uh, lower levels of magnesium are associated with increased risk, for example, of diabetes. And I've been saying for quite some time, you want to do everything you possibly can to not become a diabetic. And if you are a diabetic, do everything you can to adequately control your blood sugar. And it turns out that magnesium is playing a very fundamental role in how this all happens. So let's take a look at this first study. This is a study called Magnesium Intake in relation to systemic inflammation, that's important, insulin resistance and the insulin uh, incidence of diabetes, published in the journal Diabetes Care. And what these researchers did was they took close to 5,000 adults, uh, younger adults aged 18 to 30, and they actually followed them for tw a 20-year period of time. Uh, during the course of this uh, evaluation and early on, of course, they measured their magnesium intake and then over time, over the 20 year period, they figured out who got diabetes and also measured a marker of inflammation called C-reactive protein and in addition looked at their blood levels of magnesium. And their findings are really quite compelling. In comparing the highest to the lowest magnesium intake, the risk of becoming diabetic was 20, correction, 47 percent lower. That means if you had a lot of uh, magnesium intake, you more than cut in half the, the likelihood that you would have gotten diabetes. Beyond that, they found that the highest magnesium intake was correlated, uh, not only the highest magnesium intake, but also the highest magnesium blood levels correlated to the lowest level of what is called C-reactive protein, a very powerful marker of inflammation, meaning that higher levels of, in, of magnesium, both in terms of the diet and in terms of blood levels, were related to lower levels of inflammation. The authors concluded that, and I quote, the potential beneficial effects of magnesium intake on the risk of diabetes may be explained by the favorable effects of magnesium on systemic inflammation and insulin resistance. We'll talk about that in just a moment. Um, I wanted just to cover then some of the signs of low magnesium. They include fatigue, uh, unexplained fatigue, fatigue not related to having a thyroid issue, uh, anxiety, nausea, very common, insomnia. I've actually written about uh, how we like to use magnesium to treat insomnia. Poor memory, generalized weakness, irregular heartbeat, loss of appetite, and even tremors. And there are even a variety of medical conditions that are also related to low magnesium, including, as you would expect, diabetes. We just talked about that. Depression, chronic fatigue syndrome, migraine headache. Uh, I published recently uh, a blog about migraine headache treatment uh, with magnesium. Uh, osteoporosis, it's not just a calcium thing. PMS, hypertension, colon cancer, asthma, epilepsy, and even ADHD. So the point is that magnesium throws a very wide net in human physiology in terms of the areas in which uh, it plays uh, a lot of influence, has a lot of influence. Importantly, uh, magnesium regulates the effectiveness of the hormone insulin in the body, so therefore it plays a pivotal role in helping to regulate blood sugar. In the study that I quoted, it also demonstrated a significant lowering of the C-reactive protein, an inflammatory marker, uh, with the people who had the highest levels of magnesium. We see high levels of that inflammation marker, C-reactive protein, in 
coronary artery disease, other inflammatory disorders, and even correlating with Alzheimer's disease. So again, this is a very important call for us to look not just at our diets, lowering carbohydrates, lowering our sugars uh, in terms of reducing diabetes risk, but also making sure that our magnesium intake and our magnesium levels are where they need to be. Really important information. Thanks for joining me. I'm Dr. David Perlmutter.